Howdy, and welcome. This is not about Frankenstein experiments, but about alteration of Grateful Dead music used in live performance. The video is primarily for prospective band members to get what I'm going for, and with headphones they can easily play along. I have a good number of original pieces, no other dead tunes I have not altered, and some pieces by other groups congruent with the dead style, which is itself extremely wide-ranging. However, if any beloved deadhead brothers and sisters stumble upon this, hopefully you will enjoy, which is kind of paramount in the overview. If you're a friend I suggested this to, you can at least appreciate the vast range of styles in the dead's vast repertoire. It's about the creating of the music and the scene in the midst of the psychedelic revolution. And he said, if we can advance mankind by one step, then the work will have been worth it. I do want to briefly mention that I tuned to A432 and not, and I reject A440 for the following reason, of which there are two. First is that the who will win. As it is, the dead were totally individualized people, and I have to bring my own individualization. Otherwise, I cannot really create, only attempt to duplicate, and nobody really wants that. So I have to create my own solutions to get the same fluid agility, but they have to be ones that will allow other band members to get into the groove immediately and stay there as they become fully creative as their inner mind is enabled. So that pretty much covers it. Let's proceed to the first altered song. And I include 20 seconds of the type of music from which this song was originally derived by the band. Alter it back to the correct style and attempt to get that exciting beat in an interesting new way and add a few little flavorings of uh, herbal fun.
that we're going to reunite the, pre the protagonist and his beloved at the end. So it's treated a little differently. <laughs>
keeping with the fact you can take the grateful dead out of the wild west but you can't take the wild west out of the grateful dead this is a treatment of a song that's a a real fan favorite my problem with it was that there was the map the map doesn't make a lot of sense so i went back uh to look up to see if these about these two guys um and i found a account in the 19 sorry 1889 tombstone epitaph they had an account of these two guys they were outlaws that generally robbed stage coaches and other holdups and um the one guy's name was Shannon McHenry. He was from Oklahoma. And then there was John Jackson Straw from Kansas. So in, in this case, we're going to uh, uh, fix the map. Also, there are two voices, actually three, including narration. I'm going to try to get them in this. So.
century and uh, the Roaring Twenties and Prohibition Thirties. This is particularly interesting is the story of the Jane from Hell's Kitchen. That's what they used to call women, Janes.
country and storms coming up they know motels they take shelter in a uh, an abandoned home at the outskirts of some small town and they go in and the narrator finds a photograph and on this photograph is inscribed Annie it's from the origins of color print photography <laughs>
Sinatra, and he was probably the most popular singer of the of the time. A lot of people tried to imitate his voice, but it was impossible because it was too unique. So I face the same challenge with this song. As a consequence, I'm going to more sketch it than uh, sing it full bore. Maybe it can work as a duet. <laughs>
coverage because it's impossible for one person to play it alone in terms of at its best and the best version of this song was the studio version it never worked in concert and there's a very interesting reason why uh, <clears throat> mr weir brought in the bass player from new riders of the purple sage who recorded the first tune and he came up with an outstanding approach uh, the main thing is that it has to pop and the way it, the way that the other bass player made it pop was like this by doing uh jumping the octave
Amsterdam And all the children learning Thank you. 
so ecstatic that she didn't he didn't even hear her shouting at him the proper lyrics remembering that this song is not about the singer but is about the girlfriend of his <laughs>
this, uh, just to show, I, I do have original songs, but this one can kind of fit in as an altered form of, of dead because I really liked Eyes of the World. And I always wanted them to do another song in that genre, but obviously nothing like it except the same stylistic general chordal choices. And this is about the question of exactly when the moment of now is. In other words, you can snap your finger. Is that that's when now is? It's we're going to reach now. But when you break down the sound, you realize there's millions of nanoseconds involved. So somewhere, you know, it's in there. So that that's the deal. Um, and also, uh, the instrumental portion, which we kept short, is designed more to chase around now, see if, if, if we can pin down the actual moments when the when now takes place. <laughs>
the future is now.
just how 